Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, tension mounts in Harrisburg with the ongoing state budget battle. Health care cuts loom. Taxes are on the table. Uh, Pennsylvania politics in depth and in detail. And guess what? It all starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me as often as the case is Dr. Stuart Shapiro. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association. All right, doctor, look, let's, let me just state this broadly. The health care piece of this overall budget battle, $29 billion the governor has recommended, the, some House and Senators say $27.5. We don't need to get into that kind of detail yet, but the health care piece of this is huge. Health care piece is huge. The Medicaid piece is huge. Uh, and in Harrisburg, is, as often happens in June, is transfixed on the budget. Yeah. Whether it, it, even the media is now yes. finally transferred. We all focus on it, but again, it's the biggest game in town. But but the details are really serious. Yes, they are. And we every year, the last six or seven years, the budget's been late. Hopefully this year it can get done relatively on time mm -hmm. and that the safety net for the poor and the elderly will be preserved. But there are some real challenges. Okay, well, let's talk about those. First of all, in order to balance the budget, Everyone is counting on or believes that it is essential that the federal government weigh in with $850 million for, at a minimum, now we're just talking about that piece, to, to assist in the, in, in, Medicaid, in the Medicaid payments. It goes beyond that. Okay. This is really, we often talk about the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Right. That's $850 million gorilla this year. B big gorilla. Big gorilla. I hope it's going to pass because it's not just for Medicaid. Those dollars come in and they support the revenue for the entire budget. And that's a good point. And it's it's really critical because it goes not just to poor people and not just to health care, but it goes across the board and helps preserve the infrastructure of the budget. All right. Now, for our viewers, in order to get this eight hundred and fifty million Congress has to do something. What's going on in Congress? There's a debate in Washington now, and a very serious debate because it concerns the deficit. Correct. Of whether they're going to continue with the stimulus funds, which were set to expire this coming December 30th. And all the states are asking, and there's 30, 40 states now that are lobbying together, is that we don't have a double dip recession. And the economists are arguing that unless the FMAP is extended That's this for Medi six months. The Medicaid money. Correct. But about. again, Go that goes into okay. the overall budget. Go ahead. It's extended for six months to June 30th, 2011. And that's something like $24 billion nationally, of which Pennsylvania would, would get? get $850 million. Okay. Now, the problem is that everybody thought this was going to pass. And then all of a sudden, people are saying, let's find pay for us. Let's find a way so that it doesn't increase the deficit. Well, I'm a deficit hawk, but I got to tell you, you can't enforce that now without setting up a transition period. And that's why it's so important to extend it until June of next year. Pennsylvania's budget needs it, and so do those across the country. Now, Governor Grindel has been tirelessly advocating this extension. I mean, he's been in Washington. He's been working the phones. He's been great on this. Mm -hmm. But there's real resistance. And some of the resistance, in fact, comes from Pennsylvania lawmakers. So I hope your viewers in, in Erie will be suggesting to Representative Dahlkamper that she ought to vote for this mm -hmm. when it comes into the House. And the resistance comes because of the deficit and the concerns that some members of Congress have. They're running in tough re-election battles. They don't want to add to the deficit. Is that, is that that's, primarily that's, what the political that issue is? That is the issue, mm -hmm. but it's almost a little bit phony because it's all one big budget at the right. federal level. And certainly it has to be addressed, but it needs to be addressed over time because the implications are so yeah. great. I mean, if Pennsylvania doesn't get that $850 million, it's going to require a real now the, alignment. The governor submitted a $29 billion budget to the legislature in February. There's been some resistance to that amount of spending. But 
Here's the point for you. Without that $850 million, that creates a bigger hole that's either going to require cuts in the programs, which in the next segment I want you to talk about, and or some kind of augmented taxes or fees of some kind to make up for the $850 million, or, or just cut the budget by $850 million. When you, when you and I were here three or four months ago, we said there'd be a budget deficit of Seven hundred million. Oh yeah, now that is now at one point two, one point three yeah, billion. May even be higher, according and, to some estimates. But when you add that eight hundred and fifty million to it, you're at over I two billion, it. and it will require a massive realignment of spending, mm -hmm. uh, and it will really hurt people. Whether it's the frail elderly, right? Whether it's state workers whether it's teachers, whether it's policemen. So that $850 million is absolutely critical, especially in a state when no one has an, an appetite mm -hmm. for an increase for in broad-based in, in, in in broad taxes. Well, there's certainly not going to be any broad-based taxes. In the next seg, when uh, uh, John Callahan comes on from the chamber, I'm going to ask him about the, you know, the other taxes that, uh, that uh, uh, he, he can... Uh, update us on. All right, we're going to run to break. When we go to, when we come back, I want to talk with you about what you think the impact of this will be for a lot of Pennsylvanians if this $850 million is lost. And as we speak, it, it's still somewhat in doubt. I mean, this week, as this show is taped, Congress and the Senate is still debating what to do about this, correct? Correct. All right, when we come back, we're going to continue this important conversation. As I said, tension mounts in Harrisburg. The budget deadline, June 30. Uh, some think the legislature cannot meet it. Some are a little more optimistic. Uh, here, uh, as uh, someone once said, here we go again. Uh, back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, the state uh, legislature is involved in, the, in a typical budget battle. I hate to say that typical, but important, as I think everybody knows. And Dr. Stuart Shapiro is here. We're talking about the health care aspect of it, which is an important component in resolving the, health, the uh, budget controversy in Harrisburg. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, doctor, let's talk a little bit about how the ripple effect, the ripple effect from the possibility that this money doesn't come. Well, let, let's talk about even without this money. Okay. The budget is, and they're trying to put it together now, obviously, and we hope they'll do it in the next 10 or 15 days. But the issue is preserving the safety net for the frail elderly in Pennsylvania. And also for the kids in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania who also need certain services. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about the elderly, they've already experienced some cuts in Medicare. And those cuts are going to continue because of health care reform. When you then look at those elderly who are in nursing homes in Pennsylvania, there's about 80,000 of them. And about 50,000 of those individuals are on Medicaid. That care has been historically under-reimbursed, and the nursing homes have provided a high-quality care. And there are a bunch of other providers that provide services to the elderly. And it's very important that the safety net of care for these folks be preserved. Right now, the nursing homes lose about $14 a day taking care of the elderly, mm -hmm. which they make up with Medicare, mm -hmm. so that's how they stay in business. Mm -hmm. Now, with Medicare being cut, the nursing homes just can't be cut any further because it's very important in order to preserve the quality care gains of those who, who where it's happened mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. Now, the issue, though, then gets to just preserving it in the current budget without the $850 million. And what would happen if that $850 million doesn't come from the federal government? Right. Then 
the whole deficit, the whole budget falls right. apart. But when they reset the priorities, the priorities, if that happens, and I don't think it will, mm -hmm. that then we must continue to make sure that the funds yeah. go to our elderly. Yeah, one of the and it's important that folks who are watching this show think about who their congressmen or women are in this state, whether they're Republicans or Democrats. Because the FMAF bill, that extension that we talked about earlier, is going to be voted on in the Senate soon, and it's going to pass, I believe. Right. Then it goes to the House of Representatives, and it's very important that people tell their House members to vote for that extension mm -hmm. because the entire state budget depends on yeah, it. One, I mean, I think one of the things that's sort of holding up any serious debate, well, they're in serious debate about, you know, the budget has to do with that piece of it. If they don't get it, then it the whole budget of the state gets re reorganized in some respects because Ed Governor Rendell has, is counting on that, as I said earlier, that $850 million to balance the budget. And there's some reluctance, as I understand it, in the legislature to move ahead with this budget until they get that piece. But, but as I let, I'll, before I let you go, but you're optimistic that Congress will pass something. I know there's considerable pressure to do something with Medicare and with some Medicaid stuff for the doctors who are facing some cuts. Senator in. Specter and Casey will vote for it. And right. it's my belief that before the July 4th weekend, that legislation will pass the Senate. It's very important that all Pennsylvanians support that that legislation mm -hmm. gets passed in the House, which is why they have to talk to their okay. legislators. Okay, there you have it. All right, we're going to get into uh, some other aspects of the of the budget battle. We've got taxes on the table. We've got big differences between Democrats and Republicans on, on the total amount of money that should be appropriated. Uh, Republicans want about a billion and a half less dollars in the governor. Will there be other cuts other than the ones that are perhaps on the table in health care? John Callahan from the Pennsylvania Chamber will weigh in on that subject when Pennsylvania Newsmakers returns. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, John Callahan, he's the Director of Government Affairs in the PA Chamber of Business and Industry. He, this guy climbs all over the hill, as we put in Harrisburg. He's in the legislature. He's, you're following them around all the time, aren't you? I, I guess like an like a, <laughs> a ambulance chaser. Yeah, you're, am, you're all... Look, I'll tell you what. I don't know if they're going to get this thing done on time. By the thing, I mean the budget by June 30. They haven't done it in Governor Rendell's tenure now. But they don't seem to be like... The, 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 the long knives aren't out this year. You know, no. you, you pay attention. No. What's going on? Last year at this point, they refused to talk with each other. They weren't even talking. This year, yeah. they actually are meeting, talking, and I think there's some uh, productivity about that. And that's good. Yes. You know, that's good to see. They still have a lot of problems with yeah. this budget. All right, let's talk about the differences. The Republicans control the Senate. The Democrats control the House. And, of course, the Democrat, we have a Democratic governor. If you had a, what are the three or four things that separate the Democrats and the Republicans on this budget? I think uh, number one is spending. Okay. You know, how much do we spend, and where you know where do we spend it? What are the priorities? And that's what a budget's all about, anyway. Absolutely. Um, two is the, of course, you know who or where are we going to get the money from? And you know, right now, I think the Republicans are saying, you know, we look at our, our taxes. We don't want to put more taxes on right. people's and individuals and corporations. And I guess three is the politics. We're looking at elections. We're yeah. looking at okay. the, uh, the politics of well, this let's, all. Uh, that's a great start. Let's, let's go through these. Let's take the size of the budget. Now, mm -hmm. Rendell, $29 million. The Republicans seem to be somewhere around 
that's not a small difference, is it? No, no. But we're looking at some significant holes potentially in the budget. We have yeah. an 850 we just million don't... that we're waiting for. Yep. We'll see from the feds. Uh, and we have, you know, 350 or 300 million dollar tax code bill that we're also trying to get out of the house and, yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. But now that, some that by that, that you mean there would be increases in taxes for mm -hmm. three, 330 million somewhere around somewhere that. around. And now let's just for our viewers because it will affect you if this passes. Let's go through these taxes. Cigarette tax, right? Yes. Yeah, we have the cigarette tax at 10, 10 cent increase uh, 10 there. 10 cents a pack. Uh, cigarette, uh, um, cigars, sorry, and, cigars and smokeless tobacco. Okay. And we don't That's tax either of them now. Precisely. But we tax okay. cigarettes, obviously. Mm -hmm. We we'll just push it, uh, I, I'm, I may be wrong, is it $1.60 a pack, something like that? I that, think right in around that. In that range, yep. in that range. And, we're looking, and the problem with that tax is you look at it and you say, okay, well, we're trying to tell people to stop smoking. Yeah. So here we're going to be relying on a tax resource that so in other is words, going to be coming it declines, down. The fewer people who smoke, the, the I, less you get money it. you get from Even it. I can figure that one out. You know. All right. The, then the, uh, go ahead. The Marcella Shale uh, And that's tax. a huge controversy. Huge. Because it, it depends on how much you tax it. And I look at this as we have an industry come to the state. Right. And many times we attract industries with different economic development incentives. They're coming here. Um, but the problem is we're going to try to tax them, mm -hmm. and we have to be very careful in how we do that. It's like having that golden goose, that golden right. egg. A lot the of jobs. The business community are is on generally it. not in favor of taxing them right now. I think exactly. that's safe to say. And, that is safe to say. And, and the environmentalists and, and, and some politicos in the, uh, it, particularly on a democratic side in the House. Mm -hmm want to tax them and put more environmental protections in. Do I got that about right? That's right. And I think uh, we have to, again, get that culture of safety in there, yeah. as our Secretary of uh, DEP said. Yeah. But um, at the same time, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. We have to make sure that these jobs stay here in the state. Okay. That's important. People okay. need those jobs. All right. Now, for our viewers, no big taxes. By that, I mean these general taxes mm -hmm. on the table. No income tax on the table, right? No income tax. No uh, sales. No sales tax. How about broadening the, the CNI? Sales How about uh, the broadening that Governor Rendell wanted to go from 6 to 4 percent and include, what was it, 70 uh, 74 some? or, or 72 seven, yeah, different whatever exemptions. It was more higher than I can count. All right, but. They're off. How about the corporate net income tax? That's off, off the, the table. table. I, you know, you look at our corporate net income tax, the highest in the okay. nation, literally the highest in the nation, and we can't afford to increase that one. All right. Well, look, we're going to run to break. When we come back, we're going to talk about. Well, let's talk about some of the programmatic cuts and where it might be. There's still a huge amount of difference between what the Democrats want and the governor wants. We'll talk about that following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're finishing up with John Callahan. He's the Director of Government Affairs for the Pennsylvania Chamber. All right, look, this, Governor Rendell has said, you know, I've made these cuts. I've made cuts, you know, a couple years in a row now because of the tough budget. He's actually putting pressure on Republicans by saying, if you want $27.5 billion, not $29 billion, show me where the cuts are, right? Yep. He, he's putting pressure to say they're going to be made because... The budget has to be balanced. What's your sense about that? I got to tell you, you know, looking at cuts is always tough. And the question is, you know, who's the first person to speak about which cut? And yeah. that's the person that's going to get blamed. That's what they, they always are afraid of, of course. Now, I got to tell you, the House Republicans actually came out with a few items that, right. that were cost reducers. And I think the governor took a look at those and seriously is considering them. I think some of the ones that he hasn't really considered is the public welfare. What do we do with some of the reforms that need to happen in there that... Our, um, our Auditor General had taken a look at and come up with some specific now you're talking about the, Yeah, the Auditor General produced a report that said there were people who were getting uh, health care assistance who weren't really qualified. There was waste inefficiency and exactly. fraud. I think the, that may almost be the exact words that... 
that those uh, are the Jack kind of things we have to go after. Yeah, I and mean, those are the kind of things that are out there. And you know, and there's other ideas that I think uh, were good mm -hmm. to start raising revenue mm -hmm. and also cutting waste. And there's still room to do that in this budget. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't talked about, we dealt with, you know, in other programs, and I think it's pretty important is the infrastructure needs. I mean, now you represent the yep. business community. We got a don't we have a serious road and bridge problem in this state that that you know so many bridges structurally you know in disrepair and r you drive the roads today you know you bounce all over go. we need transportation funding it is a huge problem in this state and we need to get that those dollars now how do you get them that's always the big question now the chamber actually is in support of a, a gas tax increasing the gas yeah. tax which is controversial i admit but at the same time we look at that and say if you use the roads you're going to be paying for gas it's a direct uh, assessment on those people that drive and use the roads. Yeah, let's talk a little bit as b before I let you go about the, the the third point you made about the election uh, possibilities. Lawmakers are under considerable pressure, as they say, to get out of Dodge. Yep. Now, you know, maybe they have a week or two, but we 101 days. That's the infamous number from last year. Talk a little bit about that. The pressure's on. Obviously, we have an election coming up, and that is kind of like. You know, that pressure is there, so we have to avoid that. We also have to avoid the embarrassment of going 101 days, 100 days. And I think legislators are going to do that. I think mm -hmm. they're looking at June 30th. They're not going to make that deadline. Yeah. But they have a week, maybe, or two at the most before. Before the pressure really yeah. starts. And you know where the pressure comes from the media. You know, they'll yep. start to run the budget meters and the countdowns and. And, and all of that. And in the longer we go past that deadline, the worse it becomes as well. Yeah. Because we look at it and you look, a lot of businesses, a lot of people depend on this state budget. Yeah. And without it, we're in trouble. Sure. And Governor Rendell, Governor Rendell has been pretty clear about these education increases. He wants about a $300 million increase in education spending. This would be the third year in which that increase was, uh, if he got it, that, you know, he's recommended it and held firm on it about a 7.25 percent overall increase mm -hmm. it, he's asking for an increase or for state or for state increase let me add state increase go ahead and he's been asking for this increase every year but this year i mean in a in a time when you know businesses people are tightening their belt and this mm -hmm. budget needs to tighten its belt mm -hmm. he's asking for an increase i think that's very very tough yeah do you think that and, that, and but would you conclude that that's a major stumbling point at that's the same thing that we ran into last year and here we go again. It's the same issue again. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on. We're we're going to follow this. We're going to you know uh, ne next uh, maybe not the next show, but as we get down near July one, we're going to hang in on this budget. It's uh, very very important. Uh, uh, thanks for coming on. As, Thank you. As, as always. All right. As always, uh, you all have a good weekend and uh, stay well. <laughs>